Hey, this is Brighter Rays, and today we're finishing off our study here in Genesis chapter 27, finishing off the chapter. And so we just have a, a few parting thoughts before we go from this part of the story of Jacob's life and Isaac's life. So let's think about Isaac for a minute. In, in him we find that place that all Christians often find themselves, always hovering between faith and sin. By faith, Isaac gave his blessing at the same time he was sinning and trying to bless Esau and not Jacob, like God had said. Paul describes this in Romans chapter 7. I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the daily battle between our flesh and our saved souls. The soul longs and delights in doing what God has said, but our flesh still desires sin. When we're confronted with sin, we respond as Isaac did, and tremble at our sin and foolishness. We repent and place ourselves back into obedience to the Sovereign Lord. We may have to pay the consequences here, on this life, in this life, but in the end, our guilt and shame and the eternal consequences of our sin, they're all removed from us. We don't have those anymore. Let's consider Jacob before we conclude. The buying of the birthright and the stealing of the blessing will set the trajectory of Jacob's life. Now, God has a lot of work to do in Jacob before he calls him home. We will, many times, and rightly so, wonder why is Jacob the recipient of God's favor? You know, why is he allowed to be the God wrestler? When we get to that story, it's like, what in the world? Why would God even do that? Listen to what A.W. Pink says about Jacob. God took Jacob as the one through whom he could best show forth his grace and power. What more suited for the display of his grace than the chief of sinners? Whom shall he take up to exhibit his power but the one who by nature was the most intractable? And the God of Jacob is our refuge. He is the God of sovereign election, the God of matchless grace, the God of infinite patience, the God of transforming power. This is the one with whom we have to do. Those of us who have already passed from death into life already know something of this wondrous grace and marvelous forbearance. May we experience more and more of his might, transform, mighty transforming power. And we often sing the song, And Can It Be, by Charles Wesley, but when was the last time that you stopped and thought about the words? You know, he opens with a set of questions. Can, can I gain an interest in the Savior's blood? You know, can I do that? Can I receive a share of what Jesus did on the cross? Does that make any sense? Would he die for me, the one that caused his pain and death? Really, would he do that? My sin drove him to the cross, and would he die for me? Since I'm the cause of his death, why would he die for me? Amazing love, he says. Then Wesley explains the gospel in the song. All that Jesus did was to show the depth of God's love. Jesus left the throne above and emptied himself and took on a human body. He died for Adam's helpless race. It's all about his immense and free mercy. And that mercy came to me because I was in the prison of my sin. But then the light of the gospel shone in that dungeon, and the chains of sin fell off, and my heart was set free. Then I got up and followed Jesus. Now that I'm saved, I don't fear God's condemnation. Jesus is mine, and everything is in Him. I'm alive in Jesus, who is the head of all things, and the church, and me. I am clothed in the righteousness of Jesus, and so I can boldly approach the throne of grace. I claim the crown of life through Christ, who is my own. It's a great hymn, great doctrinal truths in that, in that hymn. And it's really what Isaac and what Jacob will have to learn later on. But I think Isaac learned that lesson. He's like, man, <laughs> can I really have an interest in my coming Savior's blood? Can, 
Can I really, you know, are these promises that he's made really going to happen? You know, why me? How could it happen to me? Why am I forgiven? And, and especially when I sin and then realize like, well, you know, I just did something against the one who could destroy both body and soul in hell. And so it makes you wonder, you know, that that, that hymn, that's, that's why well, I think if we understand the hymn, <clears throat> we should like it more than what we do. Because it's a great story. It's, you know, and can it be, can it be that I would gain an interest in my Savior's blood? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make earthly sense. But to God, because of His love, is so immense, His mercy is so great, that's why it makes sense. So that's our story. That's our lesson on the story of Jacob and Esau and, and Isaac and Rebekah and the family train wreck that happened there. But it's also a story of repentance. It's a story of, um, and a story of bitterness too, that showing the two sides of humanity. There's, like it's been said before, earth is filled with either Jacob's or Esau's. Jacob's who are saved by grace through the mercy of God, who are struggling with sin and doubt and failures, um, but yet chosen of God. And then there's Esau's who are not chosen of God. And will sin and sin and then add sin to sin, sin making them bitter, bitterness leading to murderous rage, and really the destruction of everything around them. So it's the truth of the world, the truth of how the world works, all contained in this little story. And uh, so study it more, it'll take more, it'll take a little more time on it. We went through it pretty quick. Um, Let's study some more of those truths in there. And then make sure you apply this to yourself. It's easy to read this story and not apply it to yourself. It's like, oh, look what happened, ha uh ha, -huh, you know. But <laughs> we need to apply it to ourselves. And uh, allow it to work in our hearts and lives to change us for the better. So come back next time and we'll take a look at uh, another story of Jacob's life.